So class, we just finished covering the, citri uh, the glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and electron transport chains. We covered cellular respiration, how we make ATP. We also talked about two different methods of how we make ATP. We could have substrate level uh, generation of ATP. This is that ATP that we generate during glycolysis or during the citric acid cycle. We also could have oxidative phosphorylation where we, uh, for making ATP. And this is electron or ATP that's generated by the electron transport chain. Ultimately, depending on some physiological quirks of how we get the high energy electron carriers into the mitochondrial matrix, we generate 32 to 34 ATP per glucose molecule during aerobic respiration. So I have a question for you. How does body fat leave us when we lose weight? Hopefully you've watched the previous recordings for this chapter before we got to this one. During those previous recordings, we covered the glycolysis process, the cellular, or excuse me, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. Um, and when we think about this here, this is typically how stuff leaves our body. But when we think of body fat in particular, um, most students think that we either sweat it off or that we urinate off our body fat. Typically when I'm in an in-person class, most people or most students when I'm in person will typically say that we sweat off the body heat or, or body fat or that we urinate off the body fat. But this is a misnomer. When we think of the law of conservation of mass, the carbon atoms that are present in our body fat need to leave our body somehow. And we don't sweat out those carbon atoms. We actually exhale them. When we breathe out carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide that we exhale is coming from the cellular respiration process, from the cells of our bodies within the mitochondria as we're making carbon dioxide in the citric acid cycle and making carbon dioxide in the process of making acetyl-CoA, that carbon dioxide, each little carbon dioxide, carbon came from a fat, can come from a fat molecule. And as body fat leaves our bodies, as we physically lose body mass, we exhale. So the correct answer is exhalation. We exhale out those carbon atoms. No hyperventilating, Forcing yourself to breathe in and out faster will not cause you to exit, uh, to lose more body fat. To lose the body fat, you need to chemically turn the body fat into carbon dioxide. And that's called exercise or dieting, <laughs> one of the two. So let's look at some side metabolic reactions. We're going to have time to cover all of the associated chemical reactions um, that are related to cellular respiration. Um, but let's focus on glycogen in particular. Glycogen is the complex carbohydrate of our bodies. And this glycogen is how we store extra sugar in our livers. ATP is used up almost immediately after we form. It's an energy transfer molecule, not storage. That extra glucose we have in our bodies um, needs to be stored for our later use. Uh, we have the medium-term storage of glycogen and we have long-term storage for fat. And when we're looking at this process, glycogen is still a carbohydrate, fat, uh, or you could think of it as a triglyceride, is going to be a lipid. And this process of making new glycogens is referred to as glycogenesis. And this is kind of a fun word right here. We have glycogen, that's what's being made, and then the other root word is genesis. So that G-E-N syllable is being double dipped right there. It's working double time. Um, when we think of glycogen, that's what's being made. When we see this root word genesis, think of creating something. Um, in Latin, when we have a genesis event, we have a creation event. You can think of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis that has the story of creation in it. When we create a new glycogen, we are going through glycogenesis. And glycogenesis is stimulated by the hormone insulin. We make glycogen from glucose molecules. So if we expose our bodies to insulin, the glu extra glucose in our bloodstreams will be pulled out of our bloodstreams and turned into glycogen in our livers through glycogenesis. We also can have 
glycogen lysis, glycogenolysis. And glycogenolysis is when we take a glycogen and chop it up into little pieces to make turn it back into glucose molecules. And this is how the liver releases glucose to our bloodstream in between our meals. And this is going to allow for us to help maintain homeostasis for blood sugar. There are two hormones that will stimulate this process. We have glucagon from the pancreas, and then we have epinephrine from the adrenal glands. So when we're exposed to either of these two hormones, we are going to have an elevated blood sugar level. And I can't emphasize this enough, the liver cells release glucose back into the bloodstream and only the liver. When we look at gluconeogenesis, this is a, a, a fun word. Gluco refers to glucose. Genesis refers to creating something. And then we have this other root word right here in the middle, neo. Neo means new. So gluconeogenesis is the creation of new glucose molecules. And when we say new glucose molecules, we mean that we're making a carbohydrate out of something that was not a carbohydrate. So we make glucose from a non-carb. So glucose from a protein, glucose from a lipid. And this gluconeogenesis is typically going to occur in the liver. Um, and if we're in a really metabolically tough spot, we can also do some gluconeogenesis in our kidneys as well. Gluconeogenesis is how, one of the ways that we burn body fat in our bodies. This is one of the, this is a name for that process. And there's a, a subcategory called beta oxidation, which is body fat specific. We're not going to focus on those in great detail. So here we can have blood glucose. And this blood glucose is outside of the cells of our bodies. And then here we have a liver cell. So in purple, this big purple block represents a liver cell. And when that glucose gets into our liver, we turn it into glucose 6-phosphate, G6P. That glucose 6-phosphate can either be turned into glycogen. If we have too much glucose, we store the glucose as glycogen. Or if we're in a situation where we don't have enough glucose, that glycogen can then be turned back into glucose or an intermediate species of glucose and be dumped into glycolysis. Or we could take that glycogen, turn it back into the intermediate species, and ultimately dump it back into the bloodstream. That's all we have for this recording on alternative pathways for glucose. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them on the class discussion boards or shoot me an email. And as always, class, happy studies.